Hello everyone, it's Arnold Roy, the API handyman and author of a design of web APIs. I can't wait to show you my first ever live coding session showing open API specification tips and tricks at the upcoming running API conference. I really look forward to see you there. Hello everyone, I'm Arnold Roy, the API handyman. That's my Twitter handle. I'm the author of a design of web API, a book published by Manning. In my book, there is a chapter about the open API specification. It's a format that allows to describe web APIs. If you are working on API design or documentation, it's a must have in your toolbox. Uh, during this session, my very first ever live coding session, uh, I want to show you a few tips and tricks that will help you describe your APIs efficiently using this format. So let's go and enhance this open API specification document that describes a fictitious API providing information about characters and toys uh, from the Masters of the Universe franchise. Uh, but first thing first, uh, what we see here is an open API document. It's composed of three main parts. The first one is the version of the spec we are using, so we'll be using 3.0. There is a brand new 3.1, but it is not yet supported by all the tooling, so I will stick to this one. Uh, second part, information about the API, its name and its version. And then the most important one, the path. This is where you will describe all your get slash this and post slash that. For now, we only have a single path and operation, get characters, which is supposed to search characters. Uh, it will, if everything is okay, it will respond with some content in JSON format. And uh, the data returned uh, will conform to a JSON schema, which is defined here. And this schema is an array of elements, which are objects that contains various properties. This document can be rendered using various tools, such as the good old Swagger UI, so you have the title, version, the operation, and the data. There is another one what, that I like to use, which is called Redoc. So we have the same information, it's just a different look and feel. Uh, another interesting thing uh, to do with uh, OpenAPI document is to generate mock dynamically. So you can do that using tools such as Prism. There are other ones. Uh, this one is open source and all it needs is a very basic open API document. So it has started and now I can call this mock. So we'll do a get characters and voila. Uh, we have randomly generated data based on these very basic documents. Uh, but this document is too basic, actually. It does not take a full advantage of the open API specification. Uh, let me show you how we can fix that. Uh, for example, on arrays, you can provide uh, the minimum or maximum size. So let's see, uh, let's say that uh, we'll have three items maximum. It's not really realistic, but uh, let's do that. Uh, we can also say that ID and name will always be uh, written by adding them to the required list. Uh, we could say that type is uh, conforms to a specific regex. We can say that name has a minimum length of three, a maximum length of 36. Uh, we can say that birth date is actually a date in ISO 8601 format. We can say that age is between zero and 128, and we could say that side has three possible values, which are hero, not zero, hero, uh, villain, and neutral. Uh, let's look at how it looks in the documentation now. Uh, that looks better. Uh, we see 
what is required, what will be always returned. We have information about format, constraint, possible values. And uh, on the mock side, it's interesting now because we are more, uh, we have more interesting data based on what we have said. Um, an important thing to realize when you use the Open API specification is that if you don't use specific features, you will uh, quickly generate inconsistencies. So let's add a new operation uh, that will allow us to read a specific character based on its character ID uh, of type string. Not that uh, in the path here, you have curly brackets to indicate that this is a path parameter, and so it is defined there. Uh, so what we want to return is an object, uh, an object that is actually the same as the one we have in the list here. So let's copy that. And let's, let's pass it there, fix annotation. And uh, let's go back to the mock. So when we read a list of something, characters, we get a list of characters. And when we read a specific character, we get a character. Same format on both sides. But what happens if I modify the response of get a specific character by using adding a hark enemy ID on the list? No arc enemy on the element an arc enemy. It's inconsistent. We don't want to uh, see that. So how can we fix that? We can fix that by defining a reusable schema. So the components uh, property uh, will hold all reusable things in your OpenAPI document. And schemas will hold all reusable schemas. So let's define the character schema based on the return of read an element. So character is a reusable schema. And to use it, we will use $ref, followed by a JSON pointer. So this pointer, components, schema, character, targets, components, schema, character, this. And we will use this reference every time we need to represent a character, and especially in the list of elements returned by get characters. I just need to fix indentation. And now if we go back to the mock, in the list, we have the arc enemy ID, and when we read an element, we have an arc enemy ID simply because they use exactly the same schema. Um, another way to add inconsistency in your open API specification is when you work with uh, parameters, especially path parameters. So let's add a delete character, uh, a delete character uh, operation inside the character's character ID path. So we want to delete a character uh, with a character ID of type integer. Uh, so I just introduced an inconsistency because to delete a character, you need a character ID, which is an integer. And to read a character, you need a character ID, which is a string. It's not normal. Uh, to fix that, what we have to do is to move the definition of the character ID path parameter at the path level. So every parameter that are in this list will be used for all underlying HTTP methods, so for both get and delete. So I can remove this one. So no more inconsistency inside this path. But what happened if I had um, a new operation, which is based on characters. For example, to list 
all the enemies of a specific character. So I want to add character ID here, enemies, and I'm looking for characters enemy. Um, I could copy that, but I know that it's not a good idea. Uh, instead, I will define a reusable parameter inside components, and I will call it character ID fix indentation that way, and to use it, I will use a dollar ref. So I define my parameter list. So now instead of schemas, I put parameters and character ID. And I can do the same here. That way I'm sure that if I do any modification on character ID, all path parameters will be impacted. But there is still inconsistency regarding the character ID. Indeed, in the schema, uh, the character schema, we have an ID here, which is basically the character ID, and it has a pattern. Uh, the character ID path parameter is just a string without the pattern. How to fix that? How to be sure that they will be consistent with each other? You can ensure that by defining a character ID reusable schema that will be a string with the correct characteristics, and you can use it like we have seen before. Uh, so it's important to note that a schema, a reusable schema, can be anything. It's not a mandatory that uh, this uh, is an object. It could be a string, it could be a number, it could be a boolean, or whatever. And a schema can be used inside the schema, but also here inside a parameter. So I put the same reference. That way I'm sure that the character ID path parameter is consistent with the character ID property. Um, another way to introduce inconsistency is when you deal with uh, generic responses, like 401 uh, you're supposed to get when you forgot to provide an access token. So let's define one and of Christ, uh, it has some content which is in application JSON schema. As I have learned my lesson, I know that I should define a reusable schema because all my errors will share uh, the same structure. And so I can use it here that way. Uh, in another operation, I could also define a for one with a description that would be different. I could use another schema, whatever. But I want to be sure that all my 401 look the same. And so, as we have defined reusable schema, reusable parameter, we can define reusable responses. So we take that and we will now add a reusable unauthorized response that will contain this. Let's fix indentation. And again, we will use $ref to target this usable component unauthorized. In that way, if I had uh, another response, another 401, let's say here. I'm sure that I can modify in one place all my 401. Another way of introducing inconsistency is to, um, w when you have to deal with list versus uh, a single element. Uh, because sometimes in a list, you want to provide less information than when you read the full element. 
So let's see, uh, let's illustrate that by modifying the way uh, we return the list of characters. We'll add a character summary, uh, which basically is a character, but only focusing on ID and name. Now let's move to get characters, which return a list of characters, and we will return a list of characters summary. If we look at the mock, now when we got the list, we have only ID and name, and here we have over data. What happens if I modify uh, the character summary this way to add uh, a sidekick ID? In the list, I have a sidekick ID. So here we are supposed to see a, um, a subset of the properties of the full resource we have here. But unfortunately, there is no sidekick ID here. Uh, it's a little bit awkward. How can we avoid that? How can we be sure that the complete resource will be in sync with the summarized resource? Let me show you. Uh, so we'll keep the character summary as it is, but we will modify slightly the character. And we'll introduce the magic JSON keywords, which is Olaf. Olaf will allow you to merge various uh, schema together. So we'll provide the first schema, which is uh, the summary. And as a second schema, we will provide the original character ID, uh, character schema, sorry, stripped of everything we already have in a summary. So we don't have, we don't need ID and name, but we give the rest. So now the character schema is the sum of the summary and all these properties. If we go back to the mock, we check the list, we still have ID name and psychic ID. And if we read an element, now we have a psychic ID. They are synced, no more inconsistency. Um, last example of uh, possible inconsistency, uh, it's when you add a uh, read uh, write uh, operation. So let's add a had character operation. So this is done by adding post on the slash characters path. What, uh, so let's see a little bit how it looks. Uh, it's almost like a get. We have a response with a status code, uh, a schema, and so on. But now we have a request body. Uh, the request body will be sent by the consumer. And it looks like basically a response. We have a content, uh, which is in JSON, and the schema uh, of the JSON. What people usually do when you create something, they take, uh, they copy the uh, schema of the full resource, a strip of the properties that are uh, generated by the server, and we have the body of the request. The problem with that is that I can add typos, I can change uh, everything, and if I uh, don't take attention, I introduce inconsistency. Um, how can we avoid that? We can avoid that by actually using the exact same schema in uh, request and response. We'll use a character. If we do that without any modification, it will be a little bit awkward, actually, because so to create, or is it add a character? Uh, so to add a character, I have to provide an ID. It's not my job as a consumer, it's server's job. So to fix that, we need to make the ID read only. And this is done by modifying the ID property or more precisely the character ID schema. And all we have to do is add read only to true. Uh, just for the example, uh, we can also, let's say, for example, 
make birth date right on me and age read only that way people will provide the birth date the birth date but it will only be used to compute the age and the age will be returned uh, afterwards and so how does it look in redux now if everything is correct i go to add character so in the request, I need to provide name, birth date, but no age, there is no ID. And in the response, there is the ID, name, no birth date, but the age. Thanks to the read-only and write-only facts. Uh, that's cool. We have seen many different tips uh, in order to allow describing uh, really accurately uh, your interface contract. But this is sometimes not enough. You have to provide more information, like meta information about your contract in order to uh, make this open API document actually useful, especially when generating documentation. And uh, that starts with organizing the operations. Let's see that with Solo UI. Uh, so I magically loaded a slightly modified version of the document and now all the operation uh, have been added uh, are grouped under the character uh, folder here. This is done by adding tags on each operation. So all these operations have a tags named characters. What happens if we had other operation, uh, say regarding toys? Now that we have toys, operations, two of them are grouped under the toys uh, category or tags. What if we want to put toys above character? To do that without actually modifying all this, uh, all we have to do is add tags information at the root level. When you add tag information at root level, you identify, you identify the tags by the names. You can add a description, which can be interesting. And the order you have here will be the order in the render. So now the toys are both characters. Um, another way to um, enhance your uh, open API files to make better documentation is to add example. So on every single property, you can add a single example, for example, in the name, uh, you can add an example like Skeletor and immediately the, um, let's read a character, uh, the renderer will take advantage of it in the example. That's interesting, but here, I want more. I want to be able to see a hero and a villain example. Uh, to do that, we will add reusable example. Just let me find the beginning of components. So I'm adding reusable example. I'm adding a hero and a villain. You see here that each example has a summary and a value. To use them, all I have to do is to go back to read a character and near the schema, I have to add reference to those examples. I'll hide that for a moment. Uh, components. Uh, examples slash hero and I will take that to add the villain example and now if I go back to Redux try, yes better characters read a character and now yes I have the hero example and I can see the villain example which is very useful for people who want to learn how to use the, your API 
uh, having such a values example. It's really interesting. And last but not least, uh, descriptions. Uh, so you can put descriptions everywhere. You can uh, at API level, uh, tags, uh, operations, properties, and so on. I want to show you two useful tips. The first one is how to actually put a description near a dollar ref. So let's go to uh, the character summary. What people do when we want to add a description near a dollar ref is this unique ID near near dollar ref. Uh, this uh, will actually not work. To add a description near a dollar ref, and let's do that on sidekick, transform it in a character ID, you have to use this trick. This trick. You use all of the first schema will contain description, uh, BFF ID, all of trick. And the second schema is the true schema. Uh, so now if we go back here and we look at reader character and description, you can see here that there is no description. And here is a description. Hopefully there are good news because in 3.1, this will actually work. And so no more of this ugly trick. Uh, second things you need to know about descriptions is that uh, descriptions can be multi-line, adding a pipe. So you can have longer descriptions and you can use markdown. So you have, uh, here it's italic sections. You can add image. Let me show you how it looks in uh, Redux. Actually, I will zoom out. Yes. So you have here the sections coming from the description, the header in the description. You can have sections, subsections. Uh, you can add image like this uh, using a link. You can embed image because uh, Markdown supports HTML, so you can use the old base64 image uh, data image trick uh, in image. And that helps to make your API, uh, your open API file uh, without any dependencies to uh, anything else. Uh, so that's it. And now we move on to the end. Um, that's all I wanted to show about tips and tricks uh, concerning the Open API specification. Um, in order to speed up how you write Open API specification, I recommend you to read the documentation. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit complicated. So I created this tool, uh, which show you the structure of an Open API document and you uh, you can go directly to the documentation of something here. So we have the info object and so on. Uh, and it's really useful to discover how all this works. And you can see uh, I have not showcased everything, every usable component, component for example. Uh, another thing uh, you could use in order to speed up the writing is actually not writing up an API specification because nowadays there are more and more graphical user interface that allows you to uh, use forms and uh, other stuff that uh, let you describe your API very quickly. Uh, uh, but knowing how the specs works will help to take advantage of these tools. And sometimes uh, these tools do not support all of OpenAPI uh, features. Actually, there is no tools on the market that supports all of the functions. So sometimes you have to mingle in the code. And that's a wrap up. Uh, so if you retain only a few things, uh, when you describe an API with the OpenAPI specification, on each property, use all of the features to describe them accurately, minimum, maximum, patterns, or whatever. Uh, take advantage of usable components in order to keep your uh, API definition consistent. So you use components, you use ZoraRef. Uh, use also Holof because merging schema is very, very useful. 
and then go beyond the interface contract and add some documentation, add tags, add meaningful and rich description, and add examples. That's all for today. Uh, thank you very much.